Well, hello! What's poppin', people? How are you guys doing today? Welcome to the video. My name is Robert. Thank you for tuning in. And I'm gonna be doing some talking here in the beginning, so if you just wanna skip right ahead to the lesson, uh, I have the little time stamp over here for you. I can't use annotations anymore. But anyways, uh, you can jump ahead to that if you want to. I'm gonna explain that title real quick. Why playing slower will never make you faster. It won't, it, you know, like I said, that's a, a question anybody who ever wants to be able to play faster asks, you know, how do I play faster? And you're usually greeted with the answer, you need to slow down and play slow first. And I, I genuinely hate that response. <laughs> Um, you know, just because that's a very vague description of what you need to do. Slowing down is not good. If you don't slow down and correct, you know, tech, you know, technique errors and stuff like that, all you're going to be is like a slow, slobby player. You know, you don't want to do that. When you slow down, there's so many different areas you need to focus on. Your left hand movement, your right hand movement, why, what way are you even picking the strings, you know, string muting. Um, gradually building up speed, not just trying to go from slow to fast. You want to have that in-between speed that a lot of players um, seem to not have. They can either play slow or fast. They don't have that middle ground anymore. There's a lot that goes into playing faster and to, to simply give someone the response of, oh, you just need to play slow. You know, slow down and then you'll be able to play fast one day. It's like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That is uh, my reasoning behind that. Because like I said, it's, it's, you hear it all the time and it drives me crazy, to be honest. And um, I think that the, these are different things that are going to focus on different areas of building speed for you. So we're going to go ahead and jump to the lesson. If you want tabs for this, you can grab those down below in the description. I also have lesson packs available on all kinds of techniques on my website. You can snag those if you want to. But other than that, let's get kicking, yo. Alright, so now that I've stated my case for the first part, let's go to actually building speed. And I turned the delay off, but good golly, Miss Molly, this thing has a lot of rever reverb on it. And we're just going to roll with it. Okay, now with this first one, it's just an A minor pentatonic idea, but the overall concept is targeting what notes you're going to. That's what the position shifting is all about, like I said, and more so than the lick is, again, the concept of what we're doing here. So we're just starting in box five of A minor pentatonic. You're going to go three to five on the B and high. Now, these are all alternate picked. And I slide up from that five to eight. And I go, I'm oh, sorry, I slide up to ten, and I go to eight on the high, and then ten and eight on the B. So it's all alternate picked. So we have that all kind of happening for us. Now once you can do that, that's just going from box 5 to box 2 of A minor. I want you to flip around the other way. So go 8, 10 on the B in high and work on your down slide, down position shifting. You want to be able to do it in both directions. So And there's a lot of muting coming into play here. So my, I'm not just letting the strings ring out and do what they want. I'm controlling them with my right hand. I'm muting the strings. So a lot of this stuff comes into play, and that's where, going slow with this, you can hear all these little nuances and really sit there and make sure you're really controlling the sound. So that would be example number one. You could obviously make it more complicated if you wanted to jump into your mode shape. But for now, we're not worried about that. Now, example number two is another good old pentatonic lick. Uh, the pentatonic scale just works great for trying to build up speed. And uh, basically, all of these, what you want to do is we're going to use a metronome. So this one I'm going to incorporate the metronome concept. So basically, um, the overall idea with this one is we're going to work working on our left hand movement, right hand picking, using a metronome. So what we have here is we have five on the high E string. And you're going to go to the B string, it's going to be eight pull off five. You're gonna go to seven on the G, back to five, hammer on eight on the B, and that's your lick. Now the goal is, and like I said, I'm not saying I'm a master at any of this stuff because I'm certainly not. Um, is you want to move your hands off the fingerboard as low as possible. If you're the kind of person whose fingers are flying off that fingerboard, you gotta kind of like you know chill with that <laughs> and work on it a little bit. Um, I know I certainly had to spend quite a bit of time to get my fingers to not be bouncing off the fingerboard like crazy. So with this one, first thing you want to do is you want to get the lick down. Get it underneath the fingers of either your left hand or your right hand. So for now we're going to do left hand because picking is going to come here in a minute. So 
Now next is how we're gonna pick it. Now how you're gonna pick this is, a lot of people might tend to go to alternate picking. What I want you to try to do is we're gonna incorporate a new technique, uh, basically like little sweeps, we're gonna use economy picking. So you're gonna be going up on that five, up on the eight of the B and pull off the five, down on the seven, and down on the five, hammer on eight. Now, you notice I'm moving in the right direction more than I'm moving in the wrong direction. So... So once you have both of those kind of put together, now how are we going to increase our speed with this one? And this is the same concept for increasing your speed that I want you to do with all of these. So you just grab your little metronome friend, which I grabbed the wrong thing, and what we do is this. So you want to start slow. And I know that's the advice, but how do you get fast? Well, you don't go from 100 beats to, you know, 240. You start with 100. Hopefully you guys can hear this. If not, you're just going to have to trust me that this is a metronome and it's clicking. So what you're going to do is this. You need to figure out what you're going to do. Are you going to play like one note per click? You can be rocking eighth note, sixteenth note, thirty seconds, what you want, you know, quarter notes, whatever. But so I'm gonna be going like this. I'm focusing on my technique. I played the wrong note there. I'm focusing on my technique. Am I picking it correctly? Am I trying to focus on how much I'm moving my hands off the fingerboard? This is all gonna come back later on. It's gonna slow you down at first and really speed you up in the long run. So how do you go faster? Well, you don't go from 100 to 200. Like I said, you go 100, maybe 105. And I would practice the whole first session at 100. You know, maybe tomorrow do 100 and 105. So now it's not even gonna feel that much faster to you. Next day, you're at 110. You do 100, 105, and 110. Now we're gradually getting faster. By the end of a week, I mean, you know, you could be, depending on how much you increase your increments, I mean, 30, 40 beats per minute faster, 20 beats per, beats per minute faster, it doesn't really matter that, but you can physically see a number. This is gonna be motivating you to get faster, and you're gonna be seeing getting faster playing guitar. So that's the end goal, right? So this is how I think that you can really approach something like this by just taking a simple lick, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, and it's like, what am I doing here? Now, I'm also muting inside of that. Like I said, there's so many little, like, I, I've always said guitar is a million little things that make up playing guitar. Um, take your time and go slow. But remember, slow is not our only goal here. We have a lot of other little concepts that we need to incorporate, and we need to be building speed. So step one, learn the lick, whatever it is. I don't care how bad your technique is, learn the lick. Step two, technique per, you know, perfection. Get it as good as you can. But don't try to focus on everything at once. Get one hand right. Get your fingers right. You know, Work on that. Then work on your picking, because if you can divide and conquer, it makes it easier to learn this stuff. So that's example number two. All right, so the third and final one is going to be working on using all four fingers, and it's kind of in the middle of the string, so it's definitely not a muting required here. And again, use the same metronome technique uh, that we talked about in the previous one, but for now, we're going to focus on muting and using all four fingers. So we're basically just doing this. So this one right here, basically like a G major 7. Uh, now what I'm doing here is I'm playing 7, pull off the 4 on the G, and uh, since I'm doing a pull off here, you, you, it gives you a little bit more freedom to pick however you want. So I like to start with a down. You can start with an up if you wanted to. Then I'm going to go to the D, and I'm going to go 5, 4, 5. Now that I'm picking all these. Then I go to 4 on the G. So I'll do, I'll do an up now, because we want to be moving in the right direction. And back to that four. Now that's the first part. So now once you have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to six on the G. Okay, so this is basically kind of like the little B minor section here, and I'm going to be going to six, pull off four on the G. Now the D string stays the same. I'm going to go five, four, five, and four on the G. So, 
Now notice I'm not worried about blazing through this thing right now. I'm focusing on a lot of muting that's happening. So with this particular one, there's actually muting from both hands happening. So on the high E and B string, if you notice my pointer finger, it's kind of dragging across those strings a little bit. And it's muting those. My right hand now is laying on the strings down here by the bridge and I'm muting the lower strings. That way, the only strings that should be making any sound are the D and G, and even those have a little bit of a light mute if you listen to it. Look at that, hands, how are, how are they doing? They're staying right here, they're not going crazy. Picking, picking's doing good, starting with an up, up, down, up, down. And there you have example number two, focus on your muting, and that's going to clean up your playing tremendously. All right, peeps, that'll wrap it up for us here today. Make sure you got those tabs down below in the description. Check out the lesson packs on the website if you want to. I also offer Skype lessons from time to time now, and I think that'll be it. Peace out, guys. Keep on rocking. I will see you later. High five it up. Yo-hoo.